Hello, Carol Lundy here again with another tutorial, this one on version 5. Um, I'm going to talk today about manually splitting a design so that it will fit into the stitch area of your hoop so you can multi-hoop and still get the design. Some designs have objects in them that are just too big to multi-hoop and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to open a design from the software. Um, in, it's in the Others section of your My Designs folder and if you scroll right down to the bottom, it's the second last one, Swirl. Now it's an Art 50 so I'm sure it's in version 5 um, but you'll get the general idea anyway. So we'll open that. Now when it opens, it opens in a hoop that it'll fit in. Um, but some of you may have um, a design that's even bigger than this or you may only have a small hoop on your particular machine. So um, we might need to multi-hoop. So I'm going to change the hoop for the purpose of this exercise to the 130 by 100. Okay. Now you can see that this object here goes outside the stitch area here and if we come down to the bottom it goes outside the stitch area down here too. Now it's one complete object this large one if I go to the film strip and scroll down it's the last thing that stitches and if I select whoops it's grouped let's ungroup it select it again and you can see that it's one complete object so even if I go to the multi hooping view and put another hoop in Add a hoop and move this hoop down so that I've actually covered the whole area with two hoops of this part of the design and still it's not going to stitch out. If I move this hoop up a little bit, the other one will stitch out. Okay, so everything's going to stitch out except this large object here because even though it's covered by two hoops, it's one object so it cannot possibly stitch out. So let's just um, delete that hoop or let's just undo so that we've got everything back in the centered hoop and go back to design view and you can see now we've got a multi-hooping hoop there but that's all right it clearly shows the stitch out area now in order to create two new pieces we want them to be the same as the original in width and density of stitching and so we need to find out how this original piece was digitized so let's select it and go to the object properties. Okay, my object properties has opened up way over here, so let's drag it over here. Now as you can see, it's got a manual stitch spacing of 0.43. There is no stitch width showing up, it's showing up as a fill stitch. Now if you've got something that looks like an outline stitch, like this, that comes up as a fill stitch, that's usually because it's been block digitized. So let's have a look at um, the reshape tool to, to check that. So while it's selected if we go up to our reshape tool and sure enough you can see that there are pairs of nodes around the shape and at every pair of nodes there's an angle line. Can you see that? The little gold one, orange ones are um, the angle line going through and that's a sure indication that this was block digitized. So what we need to do now is set up our object properties for a satin fill with a manual spacing of 0.43 and block digitize the shape. So we'll just close this and select off the shape and then we need to set our object properties for a satin fill with a manual stitch spacing of 0.43. Okay, now everything we do from now on will be with those settings. So we're going to select our block digitizing tool and we're going to make sure that it is the satin and then we're going to block digitize. You'll need to zoom in. Okay, now don't start on a curve, start on a straight piece and we want to divide the object roughly in half. So I'm going to digitize from this spot here right round to that spot there. And if you right click as you go around the curves, you'll get a nice curved shape. 
So as you can see, I'm creating the width of the satin as I go with the digitizing. Nice sweeping curve. When I get round to the point, I need to put in a left click and I'll just scroll down a bit so I can actually see that point and put my left click in there and then actually that's created a straight line back there oh no it's curved now we're good just keep an eye on that that you do get the nice shape you can always move these nodes by using the reshape tool later on you can move the nodes and angles slightly if you don't get it quite right okay that gives you the general idea I'll go ahead and finish that I'll just pause the video so you're not bored so I've now digitized half the shape I'll just zoom out one to one for you and you can see that this part of the shape has been digitized now it's just a matter of going on and re-digitizing the other half um, in a different color so I've digitized the second half of the design in the other color um, and as you and if I zoom right in here you can see that I've actually overlapped the black and the green if I delete the red I'll just need to find that red and delete it okay now it's a little bit more obvious okay the other thing I've noticed is that I haven't got any underlay underneath my digitizing I must have forgotten to put auto underlay so let's select the two areas and put some underlay okay the other thing to look for when you're looking at these joins is to make sure that the joins are really nice and smooth so by using your reshape tool um, let's choose this one and the reshape tool we can move these nodes these last nodes I might just change that angle slightly and move that one out a little bit just so you get this nice line coming through here and same on this side oh, it's pretty good actually on this side press enter and if you go to artistic view you get an even better idea of how they overlap let's zoom out one to one select and off the design yes and you can see that they blend in quite well so now it's just a matter of changing them back to the red color select the black one first and change the color to red select the green one and change it to red now if we go to the multi hooping view and I still actually have got two hoops here over the top of each other and that's why I still had the multi hooping hoop in the design view if I move that one up there and move this one down here You can see now that I can actually stitch out the whole design because this is two separate pieces and one piece has gone into one hoop and the other piece has gone into the other hoop. Now if you'd like to see how much easier this whole process is using version 6 I'll be putting out a video very soon on that subject. Please um, subscribe to my videos so you don't miss any new ones and please rate my videos if you have a YouTube account.